Okay. All right. So the recording has uh, started. Welcome back uh, to the second hour for our uh, class BC 111 on faith. And um, thank you for staying connected here. Let's uh, pick up a question uh, the, from uh, John Paul. Uh, the question is from Galatians 3.23. The faith mentioned, is there a difference between of Old Testament believers believed and the faith mentioned in the New Testament? So the answer to that question is uh, no. It is the same faith in God. Um, uh, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And very interestingly, as we study the New Testament, the New Testament points to an Old Testament figure, Abraham, as the father of faith. You know, and then and, and, and Romans 4 tells us, follow the faith of Abraham. So well, that's very interesting because uh, we are in the New Testament, but the it's pointing to Abraham says, you know, he's the father of faith and follow the steps of his faith. So uh, we can conclude, therefore, that faith in the Bible, whether it's in the Old Testament or New Testament, is the same. And in fact, we will see that the very principles we are talking about faith in the New were actually given to the people in the old, and we will be referencing Old Testament scriptures as well. So it's it you know the answer to your question is it's the same. Uh, and, all right. Um, okay. All right. So. Um, yeah, so we will talk a little bit about, we have a whole chapter on faith and patience. Um, so we will we will discuss that, you know, how faith and patience work together. It's in all these are important questions that each of you are asking. And, uh, you know, we will talk about these things as we progress, okay? So I'm going to go back to our lecture notes so that we could progress on that. And uh, we will take up questions again towards the, um, after I just move forward a bit, right? So what we've done so far is we've uh, looked at Hebrews 11, 1, and we've tried to understand from this verse of scripture what faith is, right? And I would encourage you to come back, uh, just read the notes, uh, read the PDF, I've given you some here, and uh, you know you could refresh yourself on that. Uh, further down in Hebrews chapter 11, the next point I want us to uh, understand about faith is that faith connects us to God. Yeah. So God is spirit. We are also spirit beings, but we are living in a natural body. You know, uh, we spend so much of our time uh, engaging with natural things. You know, we are living in this world uh, we are thinking we are analyzing we use our mind and we go about our day-to-day -day activities so so much of our time is, uh, is 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 used up in the natural things of life you know but then faith enables us to connect with god who is spirit right and that's why hebrews 11 1 hebrews 11 6 sorry it says Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. So he says, you believe that God is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So we come to God believing that he is. Right? So faith my faith is involved in my connection with god and faith connects me to god and when we are connected to god we are taken outside of this natural realm that means we are no longer confined to uh, what we can do with our own strength and own abilities but now we are connected to god and uh, 
together with God, we can do much more than you know what we are our own strength or our own abilities, right? So the second important thing for us to understand is faith connects us to God. We come to God believing that He is, and that when I believe that He is, I'm connected with God. It pleases Him, right? Uh, and that same verse is telling us that faith is required to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Or if you want to turn it around, you could say faith pleases God. When I have faith in God, I am pleasing God. Right? Faith is required to please God. Now, the next thing I want to emphasize as we just introduced this subject of faith is that faith is in the person of Jesus Christ. Faith is in the person. So faith is not some mental gymnastics. You know, it's not, uh, oh, I'm just trying to tell myself, uh, you know, something. Faith is not, you know, a psychological game. Faith is in the person. The Bible says, looking to Jesus. That means faith is focused on the person, looking to Jesus. He is the author and finisher of our faith. The author means the originator, the source, the beginner. He is the author. My faith, our faith starts with him. It's because of him. It is in him. And he is the finisher, meaning he's the perfecter. He's the completer of our faith. So remember, Bible faith, Bible faith. We're talking about Bible faith. Bible faith is in the person of Jesus. Bible faith is not, uh, you know, a set of, uh, uh, you know, make-believe things. No, it's in the person. And, and faith works because of whom we have faith in. We have faith in God. Like Mark eleven twenty two, Jesus said, have faith in God. Our faith is in God, in the person. And faith works. Faith produces, faith is powerful, faith is effective because of the one in whom we have faith. It's in Jesus Christ, right? So keep that in mind because the world, the world has its copy, right? The world, uh, you know, people say, you know, okay, just tell yourself everything is fine. And, you know, it's just, uh, they think it's more of a mental game, a psychological game, but that's not Bible faith. Bible faith is not a psychological game. Bible faith is in the person. And Bible faith works because God works. God answers. God responds to faith. Next, uh, we must understand that faith is based on relationship. Right? So when you look at Abraham, you know, Abraham was called the father of faith. But very interestingly, in James 2 and verse 23, Abraham is also called the friend of God. Abraham believed God, or Abraham had faith in God, and God gave him righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. Faith is based on relationship. Now, because we have a relationship with God, because this relationship with God is growing, we can have faith in him. So Bible faith is not a set of rules. It's not some mechanical thing. It's not some, you know, here are four steps. No. It's based on relationship. We are in a covenant relationship with Almighty God. And out of that, because of that relationship, I can have faith. Because of that relationship with God, who's a covenant-keeping God, I can believe, I can have confidence, even in things I'm not seeing, even things that are, I'm hoping for because of that relationship, right? So that's very important. Faith is based on our covenant relationship with God and who God is. Uh, it's not some uh, mechanical thing, right? Next important thing to understand is that faith is of the heart. This is important. 
right? Romans 10, verse 10 says, with the heart, one believes. How do you believe? You believe with the heart. So the heart uh, is just uh, another word, especially the New Testament is used to refer to the spirit of man. So we as beings, we are spirit, soul, and body. Each of us, spirit, soul, and body. Right? So with the heart, one believes. It means we believe with the heart. So sometimes what we believe may not be fully understood by our mind, our logic. So faith is of the heart. The mind, our soul, our mind may not fully understand it, fully comprehend it. Sometimes our mind cannot explain it. Because faith is of the heart, it's not of the mind. Now, it is good with our mind that we, uh, you know, we uh, uh, we think, uh, we ask questions, we understand certain things. All that is good. But faith is of the heart. With the heart, one believes. So many times, what you believe in your heart is bigger than what you can understand with your mind. And so we are not confined to what we can understand with our mind because we are living by what we believe in our heart. That's why 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 7 says, we walk by faith, not by sight. My mind operates by sight. My mind can operate by what I see, hear, feel, touch and taste and all of that. But my, we walk, how we live is we live by what we believe in our heart, what the faith that we have. So faith is of the heart. And many times it's much bigger than what our mind can understand. You know, think about the time. And, you know, we will see many examples of this. Uh, think about the time that Jesus told Peter, uh, Peter was in the boat, there was a storm. He saw Jesus coming, uh, walking on the water. And Peter says, Lord, if it is you, bid me come walking on the water. Tell me to come to you. And Jesus says, gives him just one word. He says, come. And Peter steps out of the boat and he walks on the water to go to Jesus. Now, try to imagine at that moment, as Peter is stepping out of the boat and putting his feet on the water, his mind is saying, Peter, you cannot walk on the water. You will have to go down. Gravity is going to pull you down. And his mind will be saying, hey, Peter, what are you doing? But he has heard the word. The word said, come. And he's stepping out. So his faith is in the person, Jesus. His faith is in the word Jesus has given him. Although his mind cannot fully figure this out, his mind is not going to be able to do any kind of calculation to give him a reason as to why he can walk on the water. Mind cannot do it. But he steps out and he walks on the water. That's just, yeah, that, so that is an illustration for us here that many times faith is of the heart and it takes us beyond what our minds can understand. I'm not saying don't use your mind. God gave us our mind. We have to use it. Uh, we think with our mind and, you know, we live in this natural world with our mind. That's fine. But faith supersedes that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next, we see in many places in scripture, and I've uh, listed some of these verses here, that God calls us to live by faith. So God is saying, I want you to live by faith. So don't live just by your mind. Uh, we have to use our mind. I'm not, you know, we have to use our mind. We have to make a lot of decisions and various things we do. And God wants us to use our mind. He gave it to us. But he says, I want you to live by faith. That means your believing in God must dictate everything else in your life. So even when you make decisions, you're making them based on your faith in God. 
not based on fear, not based on doubt, not based on unbelief, but based on faith. Right? So faith, you know, touches every aspect of our life. As we said in the very beginning, God has called us to live by faith and faith will touch every aspect of our lives. Right? We're called to live by faith and we walk by faith. Right? And um, in Galatians 22, verse, chapter 2, verse 20, Paul, he says, you know, I live by faith. I live by faith in the Son of God. I live by faith in the Son of God. Right? So that's how he lives. I'm living by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, a few other things in this introduction chapter. We all are familiar with this, how faith is conceived. It says faith comes by hearing and Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, by the word of God, right? So how is faith generated in our hearts? It's through the word of God. Faith is based on what God has said, right? It is based on who God is and what he has spoken to us. Right, so faith is based on that, that we rest upon his word. God has made a promise. God has spoken. Uh, God has, you know, has, has, has given his word to me. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the, hearing the word of God, or hearing by the word of God. So God's word is the basis for our faith. Hearing the word of God is the basis for our faith. And we will see this in many examples uh, as we go along that the word of God uh, uh, is, is, is what births faith. Now, I uh, just want to mention here, one, we have the written scriptures. You know, God has given us his written word. So of all of our faith is founded on that, on the written scriptures. And then there are times when God speaks to our spirit. So there are personal words in God speaks like to our spirit. It may not, it's not necessarily chapter verse. It could be something very specific that God speaks and says, he says, you know, go and do this. Now, I want you to step out and, and, and do this. He gives you a very direct word, whether it comes through a dream, it may, be, it may come as an inner witness in your spirit. It may, it may be a prophetic word. It may come through the gifts of the spirit or some, some other way. God may speak a specific word. Now, even that word generates faith, right? So there is the written word of God, which is uppermost, but then there may be personal directive, directive words that God gives to us, which, you know, when we are sure that we've heard from God and it's aligned to the written word, that word acted upon also uh, will produce in our lives and we must learn uh, to go with that. And one example is this. Uh, in Acts 27, verses 20 through 25. And this was a time when Paul was on his journey to Rome uh, by ship and they went into you know, bad weather conditions. And what happened? An angel of God came and he said, Paul, uh, don't be afraid. God has granted that you will come before Caesar and those who are with you will also come there. They will be brought safe. And so Paul says, you know, I believe God it will be just as it was told me. That means um, this is a specific word brought to Paul. Uh, God has sent an angel to bring that word to him. And he says, I believe God. You know, that word brought faith in his heart. And uh, sure enough, both Paul and all the people uh, with him in that ship were saved. Okay. So let me pause here and see if there are any uh, questions, anything that... Uh, uh, that anybody wants to ask. Any questions? Um, Elisha has a question. Can we have faith to receive from God outside of Jesus Christ? Can we have faith? Can we have faith to receive from God outside of Jesus Christ? Hmm. I am, um, uh, Elisha, would you like to explain that question a little bit so I can understand it better before I answer? Pastor, 
I think my, my, my question was even answered uh, in, in your explanation of faith that is birth in Christ. So I, I am okay. I get the question. I get the answer to the question. Thank you very much. Okay. So you're saying um, be learned from Hebrews 12 that uh, Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. So our faith starts and ends, culminates in Jesus. So Bible faith is in the person yes. of Jesus Christ. And yeah, yes. we cannot yes. on outside of Jesus. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Any other questions so far? I know I've, I've gone over several uh, introductory points about faith. Any questions on that? Um, okay, so Joe Ash has a question. Uh, whether the specific word which is spoken to us, which causes faith, right? So Joe Ash, so there are two dimensions to this, right? The first is the written scriptures, right? So there are promises in the written scriptures, which are for all of us. You know, the Bible says, that God is no respecter of persons, right? Uh, Romans 2, uh, verse 11, also in Acts 10, 34, uh, he says, you know, God is no respecter of persons. He, he has no partiality, right? And, and, and we know that all the promises of God are yes and amen, right? For all of us, not just for some. Right. For all of us, all the promise, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20, all the promises of God are yes and amen. So that is the first thing. All of us equally can believe the scriptures. Right? Every promise, you can take it. It's for you. God spoke to you. It's for you. Everything Jesus did on the cross, it's for all of us. So all of us can believe the written scriptures and receive Right? So that's the first basis, the, the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So that's the first thing. We go over the written scriptures, the Bible. But secondly, is a specific word, personal word. So each one of us are going through, you know, different situations in life. Uh, some may be students, some may be working, some may be you know, doing different things. Okay. So, in our personal situation, God will speak a specific word. Now that specific word can come through a quickening of the scripture. It can come through a bit inner witness of the Holy Spirit. It can come through a dream or a vision God gives you. Uh, it can come through a prophetic word, right? So many different ways. And we just looked at an example where God sent an angel to speak to the Apostle Paul and bring a message. So that's a personal word that God gives to you and you step out on it and God, you know, uh, does wonderful things uh, in response to that. Okay. So both are important. One is the Bible, the scripture, and one is the personal word that God speaks to us. And maybe as we go along in this course, I'll just share some stories and experiences. But, you know, I, I want us to learn the Bible, not listen to stories. So we will spend most of our time, you know, in scripture. But now and then I'll, I'll share some stories. Okay. Um, so next question was from our age. Sometimes faith is saying to speak to a person. I'm speaking to them. Sometimes I'm confused about my faith. So how can grow my faith okay yeah how can I grow in my faith okay Avdesh. um sure so we will we will we will but we have a chapter actually actually two chapters coming up one is on you know how to nurture your faith and another chapter on how to develop strong faith right so we will be addressing those things in detail but very quickly just to give you uh, a preview uh, you know, one is you develop strong faith by uh, the Word of God, meditating on the Word of God. 
Uh, second, you develop your faith by speaking the word of God. Uh, another way to develop your faith is by exercising your faith. You know, faith is like a muscle. So you know, just if we look at our own physical body, when you exercise your muscle, it causes the muscle to become stronger, right? So faith is like that. You exercise it, you use it, and it'll strengthen your faith. So those are some things. And then it's also good to be around people of faith, to be among a people who believe God. That will encourage our faith. Right. So that also helps. So these are some things and we will study more uh, 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 later on. OK, Devia, uh, how can we make sure that the specific where God spoken is from God or from within ourselves? Yeah. So that's a very big question. Right. So every personal word, you know, a specific word that comes, uh, we have to test it. Right. The Bible tells us to test all things. First Thessalonians 5, I think it's worse. Um, 21, it says, test all things, hold fast to what is good. Uh, so First Thessalonians 5, yeah, verse 21, uh, test all things. So we have to test those words, whether the prophecies or dreams or visions or inner witness, we have to test it. And um, we, one important thing is, uh, let me just mention very quickly here. One is we test it with the word of God. So make sure that whatever we feel in the inner witness or the prophecy is not contradicting the written scriptures. Second, it's important to have two or more witnesses, right? So we read about this in 2 Corinthians 13, verse 1 and 2, that there's got to be two or more witnesses. So if God is, if you feel in your inner witness that, yeah, I, I, God is leading me to do this, you say, God, confirm that one more way. So he may confirm it through something you read in the Bible that, that quickens your heart. He may confirm it to you by a dream or a vision or by an open door. You know, so there's a confirmation coming. So the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. So you ask God for two or three witnesses. Okay. So that will help confirm that word, especially when it's a specific word. Um, yeah. Elisha's is that okay, David? You have a question? Uh, no, no, I'm saying thank you. Okay, it's God bless. Okay. Uh, uh, two more questions. Uh, let's see now. Uh, Elisha has a question. How does uh, the exercise of faith relate with the sovereignty? Okay. How does the exercise of faith relate with the sovereignty of God? Very good question. I think the next chapter, a chapter that's coming up, I think maybe it's in the second chapter deals with it, right? Uh, we're going to talk about faith in God and the sovereignty of God, because that's a big area, okay? So we will pick that up in an entire chapter. I think it's the very next chapter, chapter two. Uh, we're going to talk about that, okay? Faith in God and sovereignty of God, okay, Elisha? So we'll be there soon. Uh, Isaac, uh, what's the difference if any, between belief and faith. Like they say, believe in God, have faith in God. Okay. So, um, uh, so Isaac, like what we said, uh, faith and believing God in the Bible, it comes from the same word, it comes from the same Greek word. Faith is a noun, believe is a verb, but the root word is the same. So really, they mean the same thing. They mean the same thing, except that, you know, believe is verb, faith is noun, but they come from the same Greek word. So what we can say is believing is the act of having faith because believing is a verb, so believing is action. Believing is the act of having faith. It's the same thing. Faith is a noun. Faith is in the person. When you have faith in the person, you are believing. Believing is the act of having faith. So the answer to your question, Isaac, is they are the same thing. There is no difference. Just that believing is a verb. Faith is a noun. Okay. All right. Let's finish one more question. Elisha, what should be the measure of faith to receive from God? Just a science of a mustard seed on a greater measure. Uh, you see, when Jesus said, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you can move the mountain. He is um, showing us the power of faith, right? He's saying, 
this are powerful faith tests that a mustard seed size of faith can affect so much change in the natural world. You can even move a mountain. That means that's how powerful faith is. Now there is, we don't have a way to measure faith in the sense that, you know, we can't take it out and put it into a measuring cup and say, you know, here's uh, so many ounces of faith or so many liters of faith, we can't measure it. So uh, like I had answered a little earlier, what we can say is the only way we know we have the faith that is required is when we see the job done, right? When our faith produces, we know we have the faith that's needed. If our faith is not producing, then we need to say, God, how do I perfect my faith? How do I bring my faith to that place of maturity? And very often, very often, our faith grows. It comes to that place of maturity. Right? So that's why there's the time element that uh, our faith is getting stronger and it comes to the place, like we read in James 2, 22, it comes to the place where it is able to produce. So we can't measure our faith, but we can tell whether our faith uh, is producing, whether by the outcome, if it's not producing, then we just say, God, I'm going to just develop my faith to let you produces okay i hope that answers your question so the answer is you know we need faith that we produce and we just need to grow okay uh, uh, uh please forgive me if i don't pronounce your name correctly uh, but mulongo leno i hope i pronounced it correctly what is your question please yes pastor i just wanted to know something uh, I have a minister friend of mine uh, who usually just, you know, puts up programs and he, he believes that by faith this program is going to run. I mean, a sudden program like he can say on Sunday that we are having a conference on Wednesday and, you know, you have to run up and down and make sure that things run. And uh, I wanted to know... Uh, is this faith is it because sometimes i feel like i'm contradicting with the decision that he has made because i think that things should be done a certain way that they are not done so i just wanted you to clarify on that maybe it hmm. be of help yes in this kind of situation Mm. Because if somebody is being something that is right and I have a certain mind that is not right, uh, it wouldn't be good for me. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, fine. Yes, Mulongo, I understand your question, right? So there are times when God may tell us to do something instantly, but other times, we need to prepare ourselves. We need to take the time to do it well. So let me talk about the second part first. You know, in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 28, there is a gift or there's a function in the body of Christ. It talks about two. One is the ministry of helps and the other one is the ministry of administrations. Right? So in that same verse, 1 Corinthians 12, 28, where it talks about the apostle, the prophet, um, the gifts of workings, miracles, uh, healings, tongues, interpretation of tongues. It also talks about helps and administrations or government. Uh, the, the, the word there, the Greek word really there is talking about a person who is steering a ship. So can you imagine when somebody steers a ship, they don't just wake up one morning and say, okay, come on guys, we're all going to, you know, someplace no it's a it's something that's planned uh, there's a lot of detail that goes into making a journey by ship uh, you need to know where you're going you may need to you know put enough uh, supplies on the ship 
So to last the journey, if the journey is going to be 30 days, you need enough supply in the ship. Uh, and, uh, you know, you need uh, all the people, you need the manpower, you need a lot of things. And a person who organizes that is that word that 1 Corinthians 12, 28, administration. So administration is a gift in the body of Christ. That means the ability to plan, organize, uh, and, you know, all of that is in the body. Of, it's a God appointed, you know, Paul says in verse 28, God has appointed, and then he says administrations. So this is just one example. And like we can see many examples in the Bible, starting from Genesis till the end, that God is a God of order. God is a God of plan. Now think about God. He planned before the foundation of the world that Jesus would be the Lamb of God. He waited 4,000 years to send Jesus to die on the cross. He could have sent Jesus the day after Adam sinned. No. But he planned and he executed this plan over a period of 4,000 years. So there's something we need to learn from God. That God plans and he plans way ahead of time. And he takes us time to execute the plan. So to answer your question, that's how we should be working. We should follow God. God's example, which is you plan, you organize, and you execute it well, do it well. Okay? Thank you. So that's how we should be running our ministries or doing our ministry. Now, there are times, and this would be exceptions, when God wants us to do something now. Example, Acts chapter 8, uh, Philip is in Samaria, and the Holy Spirit says, Philip, Go down to Gaza. Go, I will tell you what to do. Go down to Gaza. So he goes there. Next thing, Holy Spirit says, Philip, join the chariot. So Philip has no time to discuss, no time to plan. He just has to get into the chariot. Right? So God does those things, those kinds of things. But those are exceptions, I would say. But we have to respond immediately. When God says, join the chariot, you have to join the chariot. Uh, at that moment. Now, if Philip was saying, God, give me three days to fast and pray, the chariot would have been gone. <laughs> he would come there and there is no chariot. <laughs> right? That he had to join the chariot immediately. Right? There's no time to do anything else. Right? So uh, there are times when God uh, requires us to act immediately, you know, do it now. You know, uh, but the norm is plan. God shows you things ahead of time. And we must learn to plan by the Spirit. And the Apostle Paul writes about this in First, Second Corinthians chapter 1. He says, the things that I plan, do I plan according to the flesh or according to the Spirit? You know, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 1. Uh, and uh, let me give you the exact verse. It's in verse 17. So Paul is planning his ministry and he says, you know, uh, what I'm planning, I'm planning by the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit shows you things ahead of time and then you plan for that. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. I hope that answers your question, Malongo. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, Sravan Chino. Pastor, we apply faith for certain situations to happen. Is any work that we need to put in action to complete the situation? I'm just waiting to happen. Okay. So, okay. So, your question, Sravan Chino, is you're using your faith for something. And your question is do I just keep believing or do I need to do something? In most cases, we have to do something. Uh, uh, only if there is something, only if it's like, okay, I can't do anything beyond just believing. Okay, then you just believe. But in most cases, you know, God wants us to take action. There are certain things you can do to, you know, align or to get ready for that, uh, whatever you're believing, right? Uh, so uh, my answer to your question is, you know, if there are things you can do, then start out doing those things in line with what God has shown you. Prepare yourself. Uh, if there's absolutely nothing you can do, then fine. Just just believe, right? 
So it varies from situation to situation. Okay. All right. So let me uh, let's just go back to our notes, and uh, we will try to cover some more ground before we close today. Um, I'll go back to the notes and share the PDF. <clears throat> so a few more things here is uh, faith in the word of God is faith in God. Why? Because God is the one who spoke the word, right? So when you and I believe the Bible and you and I believe the promises in the Bible, we're actually having faith in God, right? Because we're believing God who spoke the word. And uh, a beautiful example is that of the centurion who came to Jesus and he said, Lord, just speak the word. My servant will be healed. Uh, he said, just speak the word. Why? Because I believe in you. Therefore, I believe in the power of your word. I believe that when you speak, it will happen. So the centurion was expressing his faith in the person of Jesus when he said, just speak the word. Because he believed in the authority in the person and the authority he carried. And he said, if you speak the word, it will happen. Right. So remember, faith in the word is faith in God himself. And uh, I mentioned this earlier, that faith is like a muscle. Right? It grows as it is exercised. So Romans 12 verse 3 says that God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. God has given to all of us you know, a measure of faith. So each one of us as believers, there's a, there's a starting measure of faith in our hearts. You know, we can't say there is no faith. No, he's put that faith. But now we have to grow that. It's, it's, uh, and how do we grow it? When we exercise that faith. You know, Paul writes to the Thessalonians. Um, he writes in 2 Thessalonians 1, 3, and he says, your faith grows exceedingly. Look at that. Your faith grows exceedingly. So that they had the measure of faith, but now the faith was growing. It was getting bigger. It was getting stronger. And so we are going to learn how to grow our faith, how to develop our faith in God. And, uh, you know, just to put it in simple terms, you know, faith grows as we feed it, nurture it, and exercise it. So what must we do? You feed your faith. You nurture your faith and exercise of it. We will explain these things uh, as we go along. Now, we must understand that for our faith to grow in our hearts, it needs the right environment. It needs the right environment. And uh, in addition to faith, there are other things that influence our faith. For example, we see in Galatians 5 or 6, Paul says very clearly, faith works through love. Faith works through love. So I can't say I have faith in God and then hate all the people around me, right? It, it, faith will not be able to produce in that kind of an environment. I've got to be walking in love towards people because faith works through love, right? And we also see in Second Peter 1, 5 through 8, uh, Peter says, add to your faith, add to your faith. That means you've got faith, but surround it with all of these things. Surround it with virtue, which is character or yeah, the, the virtues of God. Surround it with knowledge, self-control, endurance, godliness, holiness, brotherly kindness, and love. So faith needs a conducive environment to grow in, an environment where there is virtue, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, kind, brotherly kindness, and love. So when we, in our heart, when we surround the faith we're talking about with these virtues, with these things, our faith is going to be fruitful. It's going to produce. Right? So keep that in mind. Although this whole course is about faith and we're going to talk about faith, just keep this in mind that love and other factors influence the development of our faith. And we also see that a good conscience is required. 
Uh, we read, read about that in First Timothy 1.19. That means my heart must be clear before God. Uh, I shouldn't have a conscience that uh, condemns me. Okay. So I'm going to stop here. I will pick up from, you know, this statement next week that faith causes the power of God to, to be released. I'll pick it up from there. And we will pause here for today. Uh, I hope uh, today was uh, an introduction to faith that um, uh, all of you uh, are following, following with me. You understood. Uh, and I hope it uh, increases your desire to learn more about faith and you're eager to grow in faith and learn how to use it uh, in your walk with God in your life and journey, right? Okay, so we're going to just take a moment to pray and we will close uh, in prayer. Uh, and uh, let me, okay. Um, I'm just randomly picking people that I can see on the screen. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce this name. Zeli Toli What's W O T S. Did I pronounce your name correctly? Yes, Doctor. Okay, would you like to pray and dismiss us, please? Yes, sure. Father God, we come before your presence in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for this time so that we can get together and learn about faith. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for stirring our hearts to have more faith in you and to do your will, Lord. Holy Spirit, enable us so that we will not be the hearers only, but we will be the doers of your word. Mm -hmm. Help us to apply the teachings practically in our, in our lives, Lord. Holy Spirit, help us, guide us, lead us, Lord. And Lord, as we dismiss, I pray that your Holy Spirit continue to guide us and give us your shalom, your peace, your rest, your joy, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being on the class today. Have a amen. good break. Next amen. Week. See you again next week. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. Now thank you, sir. Time. Thank you, sir. Praise Lord. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, sir. God bless you. you. God bless each one. Thank you.